Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah and I'm here with Pastor Craig Roeders. Today is our part two conversation with Seth Gruber. If you haven't seen part one, you can go to the description below and watch it. Now here is our part two conversation with Seth Gruber and Laura Pedersen. But I do have I do have another question for you. Of course I do, um, and it's really about our tax dollars. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, and I just saw something just recently because you know obviously I, I everything about about. Um, ending abortion, saving babies' lives. I'm just like immersed in that online and, you know, watching all the podcasts and all that. Right. Um, but basically, is there it really, is there anything at all that pro-lifers can do? And I know, I sort of know the answer to this, but I have to ask anyway. I don't want my tax dollars going to pay for abortion. Right. And, you know, it's like other than just totally defecting from yeah. the government and telling my employer you can't take my taxes out of my check anymore <laughs> because I don't want them to go to pro to, to, um, to pro abortion programming and all of that. Yeah. As we know that, um, you know, just again, just Planned Parenthood alone, uh, you know, based on their most recent annual report, 38% of their total revenue came from government funding, which we yeah. know that's, even though they say they're not using it for abortion, we know how, how those Colony. things function, yeah. you know, so what, is there anything we can do from the pro-life perspective yeah. to say, you can't use my tax dollars to pay to kill babies? Yeah. Yeah. Obtain political power and wield it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the, <laughs> the Republicans <laughs> and the GOP has been, I mean, I have a lot I could say about the GOP. <laughs> Obviously I'm a Republican, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, that doesn't mean that, there's not a lot of reform that mm -hmm. needs to happen in, in the GOP. Mm -hmm. And here's, here's the number one thing. Um, and it's actually the same truth. the same critique I have with the church, right? The left will more passionately do for evil. Um, what we will seemingly not do for good. Mm. And the same thing is true politically. Yeah. The democratic party will more passionately and consistently do for evil what the GOP seemingly can't do for good. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we've got this, this frankly stupid, um, sort of libertarian idea in the GOP that just says, you know, to each his own, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And if we wield political power um, to try to defund Planned Parenthood, or if we wield political power when we have it to say that you can't castrate children either literally or with chemically in, uh, castration, castrating drugs because mm -hmm. Timmy played with a doll one time and thinks that he's Sally now. If we pass laws against that, you know, then the Democrats might say, you can't go to church. Mm -hmm. And they'll wield political power and say, mm -hmm. you can't go to church. Yeah, they're already saying that. Yeah, They've yeah. been saying that for the last 14 months. Mm -hmm. And we need to abandon the silly idea that anytime you wield political power, that you're just as bad as the Democrats because they wield political power to advance their agenda all the time. Yes, exactly. But they're doing it to where politics is one party. Politics is is both um, yeah. form and substance. Mm -hmm. Right. There is a substance to the politics of the GOP and there's a mm -hmm. substance to the politics of the Democratic Party. And that substance is very different. Mm -hmm. Not that, you know, um, not that the GOP is perfect by any means, but our ideas are much better mm -hmm. than yeah. the ideas of the Democratic Party. Because the primary idea of the Democratic Party is that the right to life is a fictional myth and you mm -hmm. can tuck it away with the tooth fairy and you can be murdered if you're in the womb. Well, that's a really bad idea. <laughs> and and shocker, it's the same idea they believed in the 1850s, <laughs> right? They're just applying it to a new class of victims. And so we have to obtain political power and then we have to wield it effectively Amen. when we have it. And unfortunately, you saw the GOP not do this in the first two years of Trump's administration when yeah. we had the House and the Senate. Yeah. And we didn't even defund Planned Parenthood. Mm. Yeah. We didn't do it. Yep. Right? And we had yep. all three branches yeah. and we didn't do it. We couldn't even defund Planned Parenthood? Yeah. Yeah. What? That's not even like, mm. that's not even like a, making it illegal. That's just saying, you know, any organization that kills children shouldn't receive tax dollars. And then Democrats say, yeah, but the Hyde Amendment, the Hyde Amendment, right? It keeps your federal dollars mm. from funding abortions. Um, specifically, specifically putting it in an abortion uh, budget. Mm. It's like, yeah, but money's fungible. Mm -hmm. Money's fungible. Yeah. So Planned Parenthood, I believe last year, got over 600,000 mm. federal dollars. Wow. Over 600 grand, right? But then they say, just earmark it for not abortions, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, yeah. dude. Yeah, like, right. if, if, if Craig wants an <laughs> Xbox, you know, 
and a uh, digital camera. But he only, you only have 200 bucks. And then I give you 200 bucks. And now you have 400 bucks. Which 200 did you spend on the digital camera? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I freed you up to get both, right? It's like, what? So we give Planned Parenthood all this cash from our tax dollars. And then we tell them, but don't yeah. use it for yeah. abortions, like okay? Like, well, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it's we are funding them through our tax dollars. The Hyde Amendment just says that federal dollars can't be used directly um, mm-hmm. to for abortions uh, reimbursed through Medicaid, right? Um, by the way, the Bi- Biden and, and Harris, they promised to overturn the Hyde Amendment mm-hmm. while they were running for office, mm-hmm. and now they're pushing to do that, right? Mm-hmm. So it, so it's just ridiculous that our tax dollars mm-hmm. are used on, on, on abortions. Here's the thing, though. For anyone who's like, I can't have anything to do with this, right? Mm-hmm. I say, yeah, good luck. No. Good luck. Because if, if you don't want to do anything with your money that helps abortion, I have bad news for you guys. You can't really shop anywhere. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know this, exactly. but yeah, don't go to Starbucks anymore. Yeah. No more Target. No yeah. more flying on Delta or Southwest. No more McDonald's. Uh, I mean, I could just go down yeah. the line here. I mean, you yeah. basically can't shop anywhere. Like say goodbye to Amazon. Mm-hmm. Say goodbye to Whole Foods. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it's like, <laughs> it, it, mm-hmm. they uh, s- these major corporations all give to Planned Parenthood. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do? Become a political hack, obtain political power, and wield it effectively when you mm-hmm. have it. Yeah. And if Christians who believe that our God was a fetus um, can't wield political power and use it in a way to protect unborn image bearers, then who else will? Mm. If anyone had the theological undergirding mm. to become involved in politics to protect the vulnerable, it ought to be Christians yep. yeah. because we say we worship an unborn child. So if we can't do that, I mean, who will okay. do it, right? And this is why I believe that abortion won't end until the church decides it's time to end it. Amen. And I think Amen. too, like you Amen. said, put pressure on pastors. Yep. We also have pr- pressure on even it's Republicans who are yeah. kind of soft and trying to be popular. We have to say, hey, no, this is not acceptable because like you said, it was so frustrating to see here Trump, Mr. Orange Hair, not being PC, but so many people fighting him and, you yeah. know, and, and Mitch McConnell. I mean, you just see such the softer side of Sears and yet they're so radical. Like you're saying, it's funny. They're not ashamed to say, we're going to pack the courts. We're going to do the HR one. We're going to do uh, make Puerto Rico and DC. So you'll never have a Republican party again. And it's like, yeah. So why don't we say we like I like what Charlie says we they might have everything else but we have truth Amen. so why are we not bold with the truth mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ right even though like you said it's not always clear in Scripture but we know the principles of life yeah. so it's like why aren't we just as bold for truth as they are bold for lies so yeah. we should be more bold that's right than people who are on the Amen. wrong side and I think we're afraid of not living a comfortable life because we think we are here on this earth to like have this perfect life with no pain no problems or anything mm-hmm. but that's not true at all we also know that a lot of times people think well i'll support those people which we're thankful for people <laughs> right. do that but it's Seth, at the right same, behind you yeah <laughs> exactly yeah right behind you the- but the bible also says to not be the wicked lazy servant mm-hmm. where it's like well i was just right. afraid or god you're really harsh and you're god to be feared like that's or not I'm an loving. excuse <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm not like Seth. But i love you i think Even comfortability in certain things, like I've been convicted, like me personally, I'm convicted. Like I don't want to listen to Lecrae at all with the youth group kids or do that. And people are like, well, that's just stupid. I'm like, but I don't want people to go to his YouTube channel and start listening to his videos and what he's saying. And I know that's, to some people doesn't make sense. Well, I want you to share that. Okay. But that's where it it makes me sad because I think the problem that I notice is that we think that, oh, I'm not convicted about it personally, but it's like, then do you have the Holy Spirit is my question. Like, are you saved? Like, if you really, not in that extreme, like, okay, for me personally, I'm convicted about that. And like we said in James, if I know what not to do, and if I do it, it's sin to me. Mm -hmm. But The thing that I wanted to say this first, and I'm talking a lot, but 2 Timothy 3, where it talks about the dangers of the last days. And we know, like, as Calvary, we believe that, you know, it's going to get worse. We know we're in the last days. But that doesn't mean, we've talked to this also with Pastor James Cadiz, this doesn't mean we can just give up. Like, we need to stay in the fight. And I know people hear the word fight, and they think, oh, you're the extremist, you... No, we do not agree with the story in the Capitol. We don't (laughs) agree with any of that. But it says... um, uh, verse two, for people will love only themselves and their money, which you see that is true. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. And we see that with lives, um, with human lives. 
they will be unloving, unforgiving, and they will slander others and have mm. no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God yeah, or comfortability. Right and this is the key, verse 5. They will act religious. They'll act, oh, we're mm. helping, we're saving all the babies, we're doing this. But they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. And then this is the thing. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women, right? We see that. They go to the vulnerable women. They go to specific, um, uh, sorry, places and PC with uh, black communities especially. They go there, Planned Parenthood, who are burdened with the guilt and sin controlled by various desizer, desires. Verse 7, such women are forever following new teachings. They're never uh, able to understand the truth. And so it says to stay away from those people. So with people like Lecrae and stuff like that and Tim Keller, how do we stay away from that stuff and right. where do you hear I think I think uh first or second Timothy also says and they will develop for themselves mm. teachers who suit their own desires mm. Mm. itching mm. ears yeah, you know ears. and mm. I think you're you, obviously you've seen that happen a lot um recently mm -hmm. but my comments on those individuals is, is similar to my comments on pastors who yeah. condone abortion or they condone it through their silence and their apathy is that if you can't even say this statement, it is a moral wrong to vote for a political party who in their platform promises to defend, yeah. promote, expand, mm -hmm. and fund. Yeah. All four of those things. The legalized state sanctioned slaughter of innocent human beings. If you can't say that statement, that it's a moral <laughs> wrong to vote for that yeah. party, then I don't trust you to lead me else. or your sheep yeah. or any one seeking Christ or already in his flock. I don't, I don't trust you to lead them. So she goes, are calling like, themselves Why can't Christians. you say that? Yeah. Why can't you just say that statement? Yeah. It is sin to use your political power in a constitutional Republic where we, the people are the sovereign and to use that power to expand, promote a party that in their platform celebrates and promises to defend the slaughter of innocence. Yeah. If you can't yeah. say that, yeah. then I don't trust you to be an influencer yeah. for <laughs> any young people who look to you as a moral or spiritual leader. And so yeah. when yeah. you've got Lecrae, who arranged the death of his unborn child mm -hmm. and has repented mm -hmm. of it and mourns over it and has a couple lines in one of his songs about it, but then goes and campaigns for pro-abortion Democrats in Georgia, Raphael mm -hmm. Warnock and John Ossoff, yeah. who secured both of those Senate seats, which gave the Senate a 50 mm -hmm. 50 split mm. and who becomes the tie-breaking mm. vote kamala, kamala harris the most and I, i'm not speaking hyperbolically here she's not the a moderate most <laughs> radical pro-abortion yep, politician yep. in american yeah. history oh, yeah. uh and i have a podcast Newsweek episode. said she's more radical than bernie right yeah <laughs> i think i have a podcast episode <laughs> called um uh kamala harris hates babies i think is what mm -hmm. I, I called it yeah, I had one called Joe Biden, Abortion Crazy Kook, and <laughs> Kamala Harris Hates Baby. So you guys go to my podcast, and, and I, what, what I did is I went through Kamala Harris's political history on abortion. Mm -hmm. So and, I, and, th and then I made the case, she's the most radical pro-abortion politician in American history. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. She becomes the tie-breaking vote mm -hmm. yeah. for all of the type of radical abortion legislation they, they want to push. And that is thanks to people like Lecrae, yeah. mm. who helped who helped the pro-abortion left in Planned Parenthood secure that 50-50 split mm -hmm. in the Senate. Because mm -hmm. without that 50-50 split in yeah. the Senate, you don't have to worry about the tie-breaking vote, which mm -hmm. dwells in Kamala Harris's hands. Yeah. If you're a Christian post-abortion uh, yeah. son of God and rapper who uses your platform and influence to say it is okay, it is at least acceptable mm -hmm. to lend credence and support to that party— then yeah, I don't want anyone looking to them yeah. to be influenced or discipled in a Christian ethic because whatever Christian ethic that is, yeah, uh, it, it's probably one you've made in your own image. Amen. So Amen. yeah, how do we Let's deal go. with these types of um, of teachers mm -hmm. that people are that are that are setting themselves up yeah. um, to to reach young people yeah. and who are pushing really anti um, biblical positions? I think we one we ignore them, two we hold them to account. Mm -hmm. And so we, 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 we very clearly say Lecrae, as far as I know, is a brother because mm -hmm. I, I, I can't actually, I am not God. Judge, I can't yeah, know yeah. if he's Judge, born again yeah. or not. Yeah. Lecrae is a brother and he is more wrong than he could ever be. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a brother. I can't say that he's not in the kingdom of heaven, but he could be, he could be no wrong. He exactly. could be no more wrong on this issue. No. And hey, young people, Church of Christ, Ew. America, you should know that Lecrae is the same thing as the Levite and the priest in the parable of the mm-hmm. Good Samaritan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He walks Who's by on the road? other side of the road. In mm-hmm. fact, it might be fair to say that if mm-hmm. the Levite and the priest were campaigning to legalize uh, street mugging, <laughs> that that, <laughs> that would actually be Lecrae. <laughs> yeah. Because not only did the Levite and the priest walk by on the other side of the road when there was a bleeding dude, mm-hmm. but they were they were probably personally anti-street mugging because <laughs> yeah. they were pastors, yeah. right? Yeah. Lecrae says he's personally pro like he's yeah. pro-life, yeah. but then he votes for politicians that are pro-abortion. Huh? Mm-hmm. Wait, huh? what? Yeah. Yeah. That's but like it, saying but it I'm G- personally yeah. against spousal abuse. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Craig. Like yeah. I would never beat my wife, but like spousal abuse, it's a like it's it should be legal. Yeah. It's okay if it's legal. Yeah. But Craig, you can what? Know. Yeah, you sicko. What the heck are you talking about? Like same thing. Like Christ says, yeah. I'm personally pro life, but it should be legal, yeah. right? So that, that that would even be worse in the parable of the Good Samaritan. It'd be like if the Levite and the priest not only walked by bleeding victims, but then they used their pulpit to campaign for to, to legalize street <laughs> mugging, but they they would never street mug someone. I mean, just ridiculous. Yeah. So I think we have to hold them to account. We have to say while they may be in God's flock, yeah. um, they're actually attacking His sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think, but didn't Kamala Harris say she doesn't want guns banned because she doesn't want to kill our babies anymore? <laughs> so, so she's sort of pro-life in a weird. What child the room you know can't be yeah. killed, but inside you can be yeah, slaughtered, yeah. right? Crazy right. hypocrisy. Crazy anyway. So the last two questions that you have um, oh, I about the, the local can I ask about the Roe v. Wade one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yes, can go for it. it. I'm sorry. You're I did. Good? I know you, this always ends up going long. <laughs> um, you previously talked about Roe versus Wade and. Um, obviously the movie, I haven't seen it yet. I, I'm going to, um, I've looked a lot into what all happened with that. Um, but, um, and I've heard you say previously, you know, about what's going to happen. I mean, in the pro-life circles, people keep talking about, it's going to be overturned. It's going to go back to the Supreme court. It's going to be overturned. Um, so what are your thoughts around that? It, it being overturned and what does that mean? Obviously people say it's going to go back to the States. Arizona is a pretty conservative state. We have some really, some pretty good pro-life um, laws on the books. It's always a battle. You know, mm-hmm. we have this narrow margin right, right now to be able to continue doing that. Um, but it goes back to the States, but what does that really look like? And what is your opinion of it being overturned? Yeah, we don't have the Supreme Court capital to overturn Roe versus Wade. Sorry to break it to you. Mm-hmm. And this has become a sort of hip talking point in mm-hmm. the GOP and conservative circles, even in some pro-life circles that say like, mm-hmm. you know, just one more justice. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is, is we have had Republican appointed justices. I'm sorry, a majority of Republican appointed justices um, at every major Supreme Court failure on the issue of abortion. Mm-hmm. So we had a majority uh, uh, Republican appointed Supreme Court in 1973 when we got Roe versus Wade and Doe versus Bolton. Uh, we had a Republican majority appointed Supreme Court in the 90s with um, Planned Parenthood v. Casey, which mm-hmm. reaffirmed um, Roe um, and also made it clear that men, the fathers, mm. who are the biological fathers of the unborn child, have no rights. Mm. have no right. rights to defend their own offspring. Mm. Um, hmm. So yeah. the one more justice thing has never really worked out. Now, listen, that, that that's not me saying, therefore, abandon the political battle. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. like, we've gotten some decisions recently that have been very good, and we've gotten them by one vote, mm-hmm. wow. which means, right, which means that without Trump uh, doing uh, Brett Kavanaugh, Mm-hmm. Neil Gorsuch and Amy Coney Barrett, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, we wouldn't have gotten that yeah, at all. So, so I, that's very important. Totally, yeah. like I will totally yeah. defend um, the the Trump administration as the morally superior option, even though there were many things I was upset about. Um, but I don't think even now we have the an, the an pro life justices required to overturn Roe. In fact, you know what? I can only tell you that there is one justice I know. There's only one justice I can tell you. I could tell you right now that he would overturn Roe, that if there was a decision to overturn Roe versus Wade, he would vote to overdo it, uh, overturn, and that's Clarence Thomas. Mm -hmm. He's the only one I can tell you that of. And because that's because he said that. Wow. He's literally don't said think Amy would do it? that I don't know. I just don't know. Oh, okay. I just don't mm-hmm. know enough. I haven't yeah. seen enough yet, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Now she's she is a pro life Catholic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, 
But Joe Biden we, says he's a pro-life Catholic, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. I just, I haven't seen, I, I haven't had, I haven't seen her tried enough to really know, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, and then it, last year, I think there was a decision about whether to hear a case. Um, and the, the Supreme Court voted to not even hear it. I'm forgetting which one it was. Um, and then we had, um, uh, we had the decision out of Louisiana yeah. called June Medical versus Rousseau, mm -hmm. which was answering this question, should abortion clinics be held to the same medical standards mm. as every other ambulatory surgical center in the state? Mm -hmm. In other words, should abortion clinics, which perform surgeries, their murder surgery, should they be held to the same medical standards as every other place that performs mm -hmm. surgeries? Like, wh how could you say no to that? Yeah, like, exactly. that's just like <laughs> yeah, catering absolutely. to the health of women. And, uh, and they voted against it by one. Mm. And that was thanks to John... To Roberts, yeah. John Roberts, Roberts is that right? flipped. Yeah, who is? I mean, at this point, Bush, it, it Bush. is one of two things. He is either bl being blackmailed mm. to do these things, mm. or he is what Michael Knowles calls a court jester in the kingdom of liberalism. Mm. <laughs> Meaning, he he performs, yeah. you know, th theatrical um, acts yeah. for the liberal yeah. establishment in order yeah. to get crumbs from their table, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while he while he espouses conservative ideals. Yeah. But then he just goes and performs for the applause and approval of liberals, yeah. <laughs> which means that your 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 confession means nothing because yeah. you never resist the evil of our times. Yeah. So it's one of those two things. He's either being blackmailed, quite it, literally, like, like we will murder your that family. Or, is because that your they, opinion or have you heard people no, no, say that? No, no, that's my opinion. Okay. Is that, yeah, he's either being blackmailed. Other uh, people have floated this because okay. uh, yeah. he continues to side with the liberals yeah, yeah. on every major and decision. And didn't Bush appoint yeah. it? Bush appointed him, right? Uh, I think you're right, yeah. yeah. Or, or, or he just literally, he's just a liberal. And he's yeah. just yeah. he's been masquerading as, as a Republican. conservative for a yeah. long time. So, yeah. anyways, all that to say, we've been let down over and over and over again. And I think that's because they fear this massive backlash because because abortion is the greatest sacrament to the left, yeah. and so they will defend it at all costs. Mm -hmm. But Clarence Thomas is the only one I can tell you we for sure have. But let's say we do, right? God works a miracle. We overturn Roe. It goes back to the states. Then our work just began. Because yeah. their true justice happens when every individual, regardless of what state you dwell in, have your first natural right respect of the right to life. Mm -hmm. And this is why it was unacceptable to Lincoln that Stephen Douglas in the late 1850s, who was running against him for the 1860 election, wanted to protect the right of each state to vote slavery up or down, to mm. use his language. Just leave it to the states to decide whether they'll purchase human beings and treat them like cows. Mm. Well, no, no, you don't get to just decide that in your state. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the federal government ought to have and eventually did step in and say you can't. Same thing mm -hmm. has to happen on abortion. Amen, amen. Do you want to ask the last one? Yes, about I will. Okay. Um, so, you know, what, like, basically, what can we do at a local level? I mean, obviously we, with here at Calvary Oro Valley, we've got a very proactive, um, pastor who's not afraid to speak mm -hmm. and very bold, um, has been very supportive of us starting a minute, this ministry mm -hmm. here at Calvary. Um, but you know, what can we do at that local level? So basically what are our marching orders for, yeah. e again, for anybody who's listening to this to say, I can take this idea to my church. I can go yeah. out and yep. <laughs> stand with posters of, of mm -hmm. aborted babies yep. outside my church until my pastor listens to me. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, we, we, you know, we, we firstly need the, the shepherds and the pastors to be clarifying these issues from the pulpit, right? So there needs to be that moral and political clarity that's, that's being brought. And you need, you need to put pressure on your pastor to do that. If he's not, then obviously, yeah, you find another church, but for churches who are, who are willing to defend life and they're willing to step up and engage, um, then I believe that everything happens at a local level, yeah. you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, today's councilman or tomorrow's congressman. Mm. And if every church and community of Christians were passionately involved in promoting righteousness at the local level, yeah. well, what happens? Well, then that ends up having a national impact. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Right, because it's one thing if just a couple churches are working yeah. at the local level to end abortion mm -hmm. um, and to sidewalk counsel and to shut down abortion clinics. But what happens if if Christians all across the country in every state mm -hmm. are doing it at Grass their local roots. level? Well, now you're talking about a national movement because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in, in all of these spheres of influence, everyone's doing the same work. Mm -hmm. This is what the left has been doing for literally decades yeah. is they get out the grassroots, um, you know, 
movements yeah. and they wake people up to get passionate about getting involved and that ends up a, 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 affecting the whole country and mm -hmm. it, ends, it ends up impacting the policies mm -hmm. in either at state levels or at the federal level because the politicians feel the pressure mm -hmm. from the electorate yeah. you know to to pass legislation that reflects what they believe are the people's beliefs mm -hmm. the reality is is a lot of the people's beliefs in this country are contrary yep. to the religion of leftism mm -hmm. but we don't make our voices yeah. heard loud they're enough loud <laughs> yeah. to create that pressure mm -hmm. right on our elected representatives to act in such a way mm -hmm. that promotes life so everything's local everything's local um so part about everything being local is that we don't wait for the politics to save children we don't wait for favorable legislation yeah. to protect the unborn. Mm -hmm. We utilize our constitutional rights of freedom of speech and freedom of assembly mm -hmm. to engage at a local level to save these children now. Now, again, that doesn't mean we abandon the political battle. I mean, this is a both and thing. Yeah. You never vote for the for Democrats because that's the party of death. Mm -hmm. um, and you help organize churches and rich people mm -hmm. <laughs> who love the unborn yeah. to organize 501c4s. Mm. churches should be doing this they should be organizing 501c4s or working with other churches to launch these organizations to fund the campaigns of republicans with spines of steel mm. yeah. and, and you get these people in the sheriff position you get mm. them on school boards to stop the sexual indoctrination education that planned yeah. parenthood is usually involved in writing that's mm -hmm. happening in our public schools which creates which uses your daughters as um future clientele yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and creates a sales funnel for future abortion prospects. You mm -hmm. stop that at the school level. Yep. You get people to run for mayor, city council. You create sanctuary cities for the unborn. Um, and, and then obviously you, obviously you have to work at the congressional level as well. Yeah. But the local is very, very important, yeah. right? So yeah. I'm not saying you don't abandon the political. You do all that. You got to do all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that would be my marching order on the political end you know, organize rich Christians and, and then just grassroots moderate income people to just give into these, to fund the campaigns. Let's yeah. fund the campaigns yeah. at a grassroots level of Republicans with spines of steel. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. not these Mitt Romneys, right? And Susan yeah. Collins and Lisa <laughs> yeah. Murkowski's, but I mean like Josh Hawley's, mm -hmm. right? Like Ted Cruz's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then on the, on the social end, you, you, you don't, you also don't wait for favorable legislation to protect the preborn yeah. in the same way that if we were killing one year olds in our communities, we wouldn't yeah. say, let's pass legislation against that. We'd say, let's do that. And then let's go stand outside and try to right save now. these one year olds. Yeah. So, um, sidewalk counseling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mentor families. Yeah. So when they choose life, you have them over for dinner and you love on them and you assign them a mentor family and you share Jesus with them and you invite them to church. Thirdly, post-abortion healing for mm -hmm. the women you're not able to spare before mm -hmm. they arrange the death of their child or for those who already have, because mm -hmm. God wants to turn their ashes into beauty mm -hmm. and use them to help where they used to hurt. Mm -hmm. And then orphan foster care. Mm -hmm. Because if the church was stepping up and adopting babies and fostering them, yeah. guess what? We wouldn't need the foster care system. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't mm -hmm. even need it because the body of Christ who has been adopted Exactly. would be involved in the work of adoption yeah. um, and in fostering as well. So those are the four, and that's why I work with Love Life out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and those are their four ministry pillars. And mm -hmm. so they their goal is to get a Christian witness outside on the sidewalks of every abortion center in the country mm -hmm. every day, Amen. offering the hope of the gospel and the help of the local church. We will help you. So mm -hmm. they have 150 church partners in Charlotte, North mm -hmm. Carolina. That's the mecca of where they started. 150 church oh, partners in cool. Charlotte, North Carolina. So what has that done to the spiritual climate of Charlotte? Mm. Well, a lot. Abortion uh, clinic workers have left abortion clinics in Charlotte. Mm. Mm. And one of them now caters um, dinners for love life events that they put on. Mm. Uh, their love life chapter in New York has had such a massive impact. That's the Margaret Sanger facility in mm. New York that they had a woman approach them one Saturday when they were out there and say, hey, I was here last week and I was inside the abortion clinic. Mm. This, this is what the woman was telling the love life people. She said, and you know what happened? The abortion worker inside, the, the staff person inside Planned Parenthood, she she looked at me and she could kind of tell that I was scared. Mm. And the Planned Parenthood staff member told me, um, hey, honey, don't come here. Mm. Come back next week and the Christians will be outside. <laughs> oh, wow. So they've had such an impact that there was a plan that, that Planned Parenthood workers are telling young scared women, we can't help you. Mm. Go run into the arms of the church. Yeah. Cool. And that is yeah. the heart of Amen. love life. And That's my so heart good. is that people would stop running to abortion clinics, but would start running to the church of Christ. Amen. And so when 
Christians are outside of abortion centers every day. 40 Days for Life has found that upwards of 75% of, uh, of appointments are no-shows. Yeah. Yep. Meaning that eternity's written on the heart of man and mm-hmm. men and women still have a still small voice in yep. their mind yep. that creates a sense of shame because yep. yep. they don't want to be what? seen by others walking exactly. in. Mm-hmm. Well, why, why would you care about being seen? Because it's just an insensate <laughs> yeah. blob wrong, of polyp, yeah. right? Exactly. No, there's a deeper truth that tells them this is a human. So and so cool. what if we were outside every abortion clinic every day as Christians? Yep. Let me tell you what would happen. We would bankrupt the abortion industry mm-hmm. in a matter of years. Mm-hmm. And I think the politics would soon follow. Yeah. I think the politics would soon follow as a result of the grassroots social action at the local level because we'd be, we'd be contending for the soul of the republic itself. Mm. And here's the thing. God will not bless a people or a country who allow the slaughter of his own children. Yeah. So we want to give God a reason to show America mercy because he Amen. will not show us mercy. And he, but, and he will not grant the church protections of our religious liberties and the freedoms we take for granted long term Mm -hmm. as long as we continue to allow the slaughter of the unborn he will treat us like he told israel he would treat them by allowing child sacrifice Mm. he said if you doth turn your face from that man who Mm. sacrifices one of his children to moloch meaning if you just turn your face and say Monkey, see no evil. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. I will turn my face from you. Yeah. And I will cut you off from among the people. Yeah. Mm. And there's a psalm that talks about how God gave his people over to be ruled by those who hate mm. them. Mm. And, and I, I'm forgetting what it might be Psalm yeah. 106 or 103, yeah. but it, and it, it talks about how because we we allowed child sacrifice mm. and the land was desecrated with blood. He gave Israel over to be ruled by those who hate them. Yeah. 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 How how much do we see that happening today? Yeah. We yeah. have allowed the child sacrifice of little babies, mm-hmm. and the land is desecrated with the blood of sixty three million. So God has given us over to be ruled by those who hate us. Mm. And what are their names? <laughs> Joe Biden, <laughs> yeah. Kamala Harris, mm-hmm. yeah. Jay yeah. Inslee, Bill yeah. De Blasio, Andrew Cuomo, Ralph Northam, Gavin Newsom. Mm-hmm. We're being ruled by those who hate the church. Mm. Xavier Becerra. Mm. These are men and peop- and women, some of the names I just described, who support abortion, um, medication abortion pills on university campuses, suing nuns to try to force them to pay for abortion-inducing mm. drugs, forcing pregnancy centers to advertise for abortions on the walls of their clinic. It's like forcing PETA to advertise where the local butchery is. <laughs> I mean, these are all things that some of the men and women I just named have tried yeah. to do. Uh, it, it's almost like they hate the church. It's almost yeah. like they hate Christians. Yep. Yes, because God has given yep. us over yep. to be ruled by those who hate us because we have allowed Amen. child sacrifice. Amen. And so I guess those are my last words. Yep. If we don't end this, yep. um, all of these liberties we love, we care for, and we try to fight for, are going to be fleeting. And even yeah. if we secure them in the short term, we will not secure them in the long term because God will not bless a people or a land who yeah. allow the destruction of the innocent. Exactly. Amen. That's good. And I know you had that one last question about that you were going to ask, but um, I like what, how you were saying that too, because we need to not only just be hearers, like the Bible says, but effectual doers. And a lot of times we can say like, Ezekiel 33, well, we're warning them. We're like doing our best. But like you said, God knows our heart. He knows what we're really doing. And if he's really pushing us. And like you said, the first time you went to the sidewalk or even Lucy, she does the sidewalk ministry mm-hmm. with Pro Love. They're terrified. Mm-hmm. And yes, that's Satan. He gives us a spirit of fear, right? But the Lord, and for is it First Timothy or Second Timothy 1, 7? He has not given us a spirit of fear to many, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So right. we, we have the truth. But Satan's doing everything to get us not to share the truth. And I love how you said it too. Even though the world tells you, well, we can't make it illegal. We can't do this because it will it'll hurt the women and they'll put guilt and shame. I'm like, well, if they're not really surrendered to God, they, it starts off with guilt and shame to right. surrender and That's then right. accept the free gift yeah. of my, grace. My colleague, and thing, Mike so Spencer, put it beautifully. He said that pastor's silence on abortion doesn't does not spare their men and women um, hurt. Mm-hmm. Their silence spares them healing. Yeah, mm. yeah. 
because mm-hmm. you have to come to terms mm-hmm. with what you've done before yeah. you can mm-hmm. truly repent and experience yeah. healing. So for else. the listeners uh, on here who, who want to get involved, check out Pro Love. Mm-hmm. They're here in Arizona. They do sidewalk counseling, mentor families, and they're, they also have training for sidewalk counseling. Mm-hmm. Or you can go to lovelife.org yeah. forward slash America, mm-hmm. lovelife.org forward slash America. They have um, digital training that you can get online mm-hmm. for sidewalk counseling, for mentor families, yeah. for post-abortion healing, wow. mm-hmm. and for, for what it looks like to step out into orphan foster care. So for, for those of at, at this church who were fired up this morning or are fired up after listening to this yeah. and they're like, okay, what do I do? Mm-hmm. Don't feel overwhelmed. Like you have to reinvent the wheel. Like mm-hmm. you have to figure out how, what to do. The, the yeah. system's already been built for you. We yeah. already have everything you need. You just have to say yes and step in and the training and the leadership is already there for this you. This will be a pro-life ninja. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> yeah. right. So, so, and those organizations yeah. are either pro love here in Arizona or lovelife.org and all that training is there for for the listeners here already so just say yes and we also your podcast unaborted unaborted Unaborted. with Seth Gruber Mm -hmm. we're moving to two episodes a week uh, shortly here so uh, one episode with me a week and one episode with a guest so people know cool things that people are doing the pro-life movement many guests I'll, I'll interview or have interviewed or people that people weren't aware of before, mm-hmm. but they're doing incredible stuff. Um, and then you just get educated on what's happening in the country. So, and yeah, leave me a rating and review. It helps us reach more yeah. people. Yeah, exactly. we're, we're our pro life. My pro life podcast has been growing a lot, which has been a total God thing because that's such a narrow topic that whenever you do a podcast that narrow of an issue, it's like, you get less listeners, especially mm-hmm. when it's an issue that's like, oh, I don't want to listen yeah. to abortion. Yeah, no, it's true. But I think I think people are craving moral clarity at this yeah. time in our country more so than ever before. Yep. And so that's what it's there for. Yep. But we encourage everyone I, sh- to. Well, yeah, we don't have time. I don't yeah. think so. Do you want? Do you want to ask the question? Should I ask the question? Really I quick. want to ask what mm-hmm. liberals, because this is something they throw out a lot, that you, uh, Republicans or conservatives care about the child in the womb, but they don't care the child after life. So what, after birth. So what do you, not the after birth, that's not right, but after they're born. So the what would you say to that, yeah. to that liberal <laughs> goofy thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So never grant the premise. <laughs> yeah. Never grant the preface. I'll tell you what I mean by that. But but let's say they're right first, okay? Let's say they're right. Here's what you tell your pro-choice friend. Yeah, you're right. I don't care about that child at all after it's born. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't care at all about after it's born. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's born and not murdered in the womb, and I'm not going to do anything to care for that child after it's born. So, yeah, you're right. I guess I'm a lot better than you yeah. who <laughs> slaughter the children in the womb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm a lot better of a person for protecting that baby through all nine months of pregnancy and then abandoning it to its parents than you who say its parents should be able to kill him or her in the womb through all nine months of pregnancy. So even if they're right Mm. that we don't care about the baby Mm. after it's born, that's a significantly better moral position than theirs. So I just throw that right back in their face. You want, you want to play this game about like who's better, who's more moral. Even if we abandon all the babies to parents or to the foster care system after they're born, Makes us a heck of a lot better than you. Yep. Yeah. So that's, that's the good. first thing I'd say. Yeah. Don't even don't even grant them this premise because they're trying to set themselves up as better, right? Yeah. Like they care yeah. about these children after they're right. That's why they support. That's why they support massive federal entitlement programs that provide free money um, to to lower income individuals to care for children after they're born. Yeah, but you sanction the slaughter of them in the womb. So yeah. you will always be more immoral than me. Yep, exactly. <laughs> that's my that's my first okay. response. Okay. But um, the the second is that even if we didn't it actually doesn't defeat the pro-life argument. Because the pro-life argument is that it's always wrong to intentionally kill innocent human beings without proper justification. Abortion Mm -hmm. does that, therefore abortion is wrong. Mm -hmm. That's the pro-life argument, right? So that belief stands perfectly fine, even if I don't care for the baby after it's born. It it would be like that that pro-choice line of, you, you know, you're hypocritical for opposing abortion and not caring for the babies after they're born. It would be like saying, um, hey, Craig, you can't oppose me beating my wife <laughs> unless you're willing to marry her. <laughs> or it would be like saying, Mariah, yeah. you can't oppose me beating my son unless you're willing to adopt him. In yeah. fact, your anti-toddler torturing position <laughs> is actually mm-hmm. hypocritical unless you're adopting the toddlers who are currently being beat by their parents. Mm-hmm. And you'd say, uh, what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it you would be nice it. of me, I guess, to adopt those babies. But even <laughs> yeah. if I didn't, my position that we shouldn't torture toddlers is still a valid position, mm-hmm. even yeah. if I'm not adopting the toddlers. Exactly. Right. So let's say we weren't caring for the babies after yeah, they're born. Yeah. That doesn't mean that the pro-life argument is somehow, you know, yeah. Yeah, disproved. Yeah, so anyway, that's so that's the first thing. Yeah. Okay. All that to say, because I never grant them the premise. So I say all that and then I say, but we do. Yeah. The pro-life movement has always cared for mothers and families, yeah. both before and after birth. Yeah. There are 
twice as many pregnancy resource centers in this country as abortion clinics. Mm. There are about 1,700 abortion clinics or abortion providers, 1,700 roughly. And there are between 2,700 and 3,200 pregnancy resource centers, according to Pregnancy Help News. So we outnumber abortion clinics two to one. And these pregnancy resource centers provide STI testing, STD testing, STI treatment, usually ultrasounds, Mm -hmm. parenting classes, free diapers, baby boutique, free clothes, oftentimes housing, many times financial assistance. Um, I could go on and on and on. I mean, these are so many of the things that these these pregnancy centers offer and all free of charge. Mm. Well, those are a lot of post-birth services. How about you, Pro-Choicer? What does Planned Parenthood provide to women if they choose life? Oh, they tell them to, they they show them the door. Their adoption referrals are always down massive numbers every year. Mm. And their abortions are always up massive numbers every year. Mm. Their prenatal services are always down massive numbers every year. And their abortion numbers are always up massive numbers Mm. every year. They Mm. are not an advocate for women. They're an advocate for abortion. And if that woman goes to Planned Parenthood for child services and family services to take care of that child, they'll show them the door. Yeah. Mm. So so pregnancy resource centers are actually the ones who are – loving families both before and after birth planned parenthood murders kids before birth and won't care for them after birth if mom does choose life so who's really the one failing to care for families Mm -hmm. after birth it ain't the pro-life movement lastly the catholic church which is the largest institution within the pro-life movement Mm. they are the biggest institution within the pro-life movement catholic church has always cared for families both before and after birth Mm. i mean the catholic church has opened hospitals Catholic schools, Um, they uh, have foster care organizations, adoption organizations, soup kitchens. They've done a ton on immigration. I mean, Catholic Church does a phenomenal job caring for the most vulnerable. And they are the most charitable institution, private institution in the country Mm -hmm. for charitable causes that usually focus on loving families and children after they've been born. So – This whole critique that we don't care about the child after it's born is just complete bunk. And it's used as just a personal attack against pro-lifers because they can't attack our argument. Yeah. Yeah. And And it's, I was, the, the, what's wild too is that like, um, I was saying to you off, I don't know if it was off camera, but, uh, where, um, the abortion issue was if we allow abortion and this is before 1973, that every child be a wanted child, then there wouldn't be a child abuse. We'd go Mm -hmm. down. Child abuse has gone through the roof 400% since then. And that was, I heard that like five years ago. And what's really wild about this to say my story, my mom had me, you know, in 1962 when it wasn't cool to have a baby outside of wedlock. And so she, long story, but anyways, she would, she wanted to abort me, but she just couldn't find a, a place to do it. You know, some back room, but, uh, I, so I was born in a pretty hellacious family life, bounced around, not wanted. And you'd say, that's terrible. See, you should have been aboard, but that's what helped bring me to Christ. You know what I mean? So even, right. even how God works all things together for good yeah. to those who love him. And that I'm a pastor now. I was thinking that, you know, my mom died when I was six from alcohol, but I'm thinking how she's, you know, I believe she's saved, but, she, um, but how proud she'd be that she said I was the best thing ever happened to her. Mm-hmm. Um, but yet she couldn't give up alcohol, but it's how God even works that out. So even say the kid doesn't have the perfect life. Yeah. God can redeem. He buys back the wasted years as redemption means. And I'm here today Amen. because, Amen. uh, that wasn't legal cause I probably would have been aborted. Yeah. So That's right. God is good. Yeah. These people who say like, you can't enforce morality. You can't <laughs> legislate morality. Like all laws legislate morality yeah. Yeah. and, and law is a teacher. So law teaches the country and the next generation, what type of behaviors are acceptable and not acceptable in a civilized society. Yeah. And law does influence behavior as well. Yeah. So these people who say it doesn't really matter. I mean, you hear these stupid democratic talking <laughs> points mm-hmm. yeah. from people like Phil Vischer, the guy behind Veggie Tales, He was pushing this crap before the election. Vote for Democrats because democratic policies decrease abortions. Mm. And I'm so pro-life that I want to decrease abortions. And that's why I vote for the party of abortion because oh I've seen that their social policies decrease abortions. And you got the, you had these ridiculous talking points coming out from these people who said that that's the way to end abortion. Well, the, 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 the goal of the pro-life movement is not to decrease abortions. We'll celebrate that if that happens. The goal is to make abortion illegal and unthinkable. Amen. When you can't make abortion illegal and unthinkable by keeping it legal, Oh, you have a law of non-contradiction that says two opposing ideas cannot both be true at the same time and in the same way. And you can't make it unthinkable 
by granting credence to the legislative attempts of the Democratic Party, which says that killing babies through abortion is actually reproductive health care. Mm. Well, calling killing babies reproductive health care inoculates the country with a certain vision mm. of what abortion is, yeah. namely not homicide, not feticide, yeah. but health care. Yeah. And so as long as we allow those that euphemistic bigotry to become the standard of discourse in the country, then, then that continues to um, expand the approval yep. and the support for abortion within the country. So as long as, yeah, as long as we approach abortion in a very sanitized clinical way, mm -hmm. then you're not going to be able to rally support to end abortion. Yep. So as long as Democrats are in power, mm -hmm. you can't make abortion illegal or unthinkable. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's our goals. But we know that law does influence behavior. Yep. And your mom is an example of that. Why do we know that? Because in the early 1970s, before abortion was legal, the illegal abortion rate, okay, the median, meaning the average, the median abortion rate every year in America was about 98,000, mm. okay? What were the totals after it was legalized? Well, in 1974, 1975, 1976, totals jumped to up to 1.6 million a year. Wow. Mm. So you went from an average of around 100,000 to 1.6 million. Uh, did Very law influence behavior? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think law influenced behavior. Mm. So as long as we have laws that allow the murder of the preborn, not only are more children killed, but then the culture is taught that this must be okay and acceptable yeah. because right. it's legal. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I love that what we were talking about before too, with why it's so important to also go to a church and a church that is a Bible-believing church that stands up for these things and if you don't see that yeah. you can walk away because i know this is kind of random and not there but i love also your instagram where you just did the you talked with monica and she was the former planned parenthood sex educator yeah so she was saying how um that planned parenthood told her that girls as young as 10 were coming with STDs and were coming that were coming in for abortions, having objects removed from their bodies. I figured these girls were being abused and go, and I was going to teach them how to avoid sexual situations. And I wanted to protect them. And she immediately um, patted me on the knee and said, no dear, we're not going to teach them not to be sexually active. We're going to teach them how to do it safer. And mm. so that just shows you right there what's going on in our schools. Mm. This is why the pro, we think the pro-life thing is not a big deal. This is the corners, the roots of the evil. When people are like, oh, their sacred like the homo even homosexuality, because yeah. when you think about it, if you don't know what the baby is, like you're saying in the womb, how are they going to know what they are, what gender they are outside? So that makes it confusing <laughs> for these liberals. And then we also see with young girls with fornication, the Bible says, is it First Corinthians six, where it talks about the sexual immoral, moral homosexuals yeah. will not hear the That's kingdom of God. Right. So right there, it starts with the churches needed to speak the truth, even about those issues, mm -hmm. how the men need to be men, be fathers. The, the parents need to teach their children. You cannot be just sleeping around with mm -hmm. everyone. Even if you have doing it safe, it doesn't matter. That's not right. And then and all these other issues. So yeah. encourage people to go back to watch the, um, YouTube, the sermon that you guys, you gave this Sunday, that'll be in the description below your podcast, Unaborted. And you can also support Seth um, by texting babies to 474747. Yeah. That'll be in the description. And then Laura, any last thoughts? Cause I want you to, any yeah, last things you want to share? Thank you so much for the opportunity and, you know, go to the 40 days for life yeah. um, website and you can search Tucson and find all of our information there as well. And yeah, come out to the sidewalk and join the fight. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Time Praise to God. get off the bench. Yeah. As Bill Federer yeah. says, in America, the people are the king and the mm. church is the counselors to the king. Mm. And in every other um, government, for the vast majority of human history, you had a king yeah. and you had the counselors to the king. 
and the people were subjugated and ruled by the king. They didn't mm -hmm. have a democratic voice to be able to govern themselves. In America, we have a form of self-government. We're not a democracy. We're yeah. not pure majoritarianism. We are a constitutional republic with checks and balances that puts political power into the hands of the people. At least we have it right now. That's right. <laughs> That's right. At least we have it right now. And hopefully we'll remain if yeah, the church exactly. wakes up. Yeah, and so exactly. the king in America, right, to, to sort of draw on just the, the, the political history of the world, is the people. Amen. We're the we king the in people. America. And the counselor to the king, rather than being some sage who sits next to the throne of the king and advises mm -hmm. him, the counselor to the king in America is the yeah. church. Mm -hmm. And it was the church and Christians who were behind the founding of this country. Yeah. Black Road Road. I mean, That's the, right. And so we actually yeah. have greater responsibility yes, than anyone do. else in human history for how this country turns out because we've been given more power mm -hmm. to control how it turns out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which makes us more responsible, it's true. right? Yeah. So as Spider-Man's uncle said, with great much. power comes great, great responsibility. responsibility. <laughs> or to quote Jesus of Nazareth, yeah. to whom much is given, much, much, is, required. Required. much is required. And so, yeah. so people, we have a greater responsibility because we have more political power than any other human being in all of human history, mm. um, except a king or a monarch. But we're all the king. Yeah. And so when we all come together, we are more powerful than anyone else. And so um, that means God's going to actually hold us more accountable. Mm -hmm parable of the talents, anyone, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. than, than former brothers and sisters in different countries simply because they couldn't just vote Hitler out, right? They couldn't mm -hmm. just vote Mao Zedong out, but, mm -hmm. but we can here. Yeah. We have greater yeah. responsibility. And we have, to, like you said it so well, that if we don't, we will lose it. Oh, you yeah. know, if we don't take our First Amendment and risk being, yeah. you know, yep. banned on Twitter and cancel, we will lose eventually. They're yeah. not going to be nice to us just right. because we don't say what they want. They're eventually going to yeah. cancel the church. And you see that with socialism, church is the first thing to go, right? Yeah, so right. we have to see that. So yeah. yeah. Amen. Anything else I you want to say? I think that's it. Okay. Seth, thank you for joining us. Thank and yours. thank you for coming. Can you pray for us? Yeah, Why don't you pray, pray for us, for Seth? Us. Sure thing. Yeah. Father, thank you for this uh, wonderful time with um, these uh, sisters and brother. And thank you for this this church and, and the people here who are, um, who are getting equipped to engage the culture. Um, as light bearers um, of your eternal light. It's a, it's a, a light on a hill, it's a city on a hill um, that's beckoning people to come, come and listen, uh, come and repent, uh, come and meet the creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, and so thank you for putting us at this time in history for scripture says that you control the, uh, the time and the boundaries mm -hmm. of our existence and where we've been placed. And so it's not without accident that we're alive today. Um, and you have a purpose for us. And so pray that you would encourage the listeners to the show and, and our brothers and sisters throughout this country um, to, to wake up and start exercising stewardship over the gifts that we've been given, um, which is primarily this country. Um, and thank you for the ability to be able to, to seek the good of this, this country that we've been exiled in um, and, and seek the good of our neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, and so help us to um, wake up and empower your church yes, to, to end the genocide of your children. And uh, pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Praise yeah. God. Thanks, Seth. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and share this video. If you'd like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. And thank you to our sponsors, Mission Heating and Cooling. If you are in the Arizona area, please check out their website in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.